Welcome to Amusement Sparks. My name is Andrew Spahn, the host of this here theme park design show. And with me today is Hi. the one and only Zane Relifer. It's me, Zane. Now, Hi. don't be confused. I'm one and only because it's Zane. The Relifer part is an ambiguous term. Great point. There could be any number of Relifers. Um, there are a, there is a number. It is small and exact. In the, I will not share it. <laughs> in the podcast world, there are two statistically significant relifers in my podcast life oh well thank you uh you're welcome and you're one of those the other one is is your brother ben who was on the shonen episode uh an episode or two back and yeah you guys do some other podcast stuff right uh yeah um we were both on the carton cast which uh you know ben went into some detail about just regular cartoon review podcast and then also uh i'm sort of in charge of empowered the superpower um podcast which goes down smooth three episodes a week each about five to ten minutes and uh that's coming up on its one year uh, anniversary that's a lot of episodes man yeah it, it's pretty wild like that that show is super fun to be on as a guest and i really like listening to it i've talked about it before on the show but it's it's a super cool show if you haven't checked it out uh if you have any interest in superpowers or kind of weird funny improv uh it's a good time for sure <laughs> There's just so many powers you don't think about. Right. And they're all like, most of them are very somewhat obscure and like uh, can be extremely specific. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Like being able to turn into a swarm of uh, rodents or. Uh, <laughs> you don't hear about that every day. Or being able to intuit business situations. <laughs> like all the, all the weird one-off stuff that doesn't make it into the movies. Right. None of these will probably ever be in a movie as far as I I can tell. I, I wish they were. I think they're much more interesting, especially from like an indie movie perspective. A lot of these powers are very nuanced, and the discussion on Empowered gets to the, instead of just beating up bad guys, how else would this impact your daily life kind of stuff? Yeah, and a lot of them are like really weak and not very helpful powers, so we just try and get as much use out of them as possible. You know, how can we how can we break the rules or the terms of this power to like uh, uh, get it a few a few tiers higher? Uh, so that podcast is sort of my brainchild, and uh, I'd like to tell your audience that um, very low bar to entry. If you would like to listen to it, hear how the rhythm goes, and just send it in, I'll probably put it up. It's it's anyone's welcome to contribute. That's awesome, and that kind of goes along with like one of our founding tenets of the Fancy Bat Podcast Network mm -hmm. collaboration that we're all doing. Well, not all of us, but... You know, the, the two of us and some other people. Um, <laughs> it's kind of about making a podcast is pretty easy. And if you want help, we're here to help you. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's what I like uh, a num uh, as well is just uh, we're able to contribute to each other's guests because the more the merrier for a lot of these podcasts. Um, I did the Carton cast for a while with just us. And those were fun. But, you know, we've spent our entire lives together. Uh, it can, our conversations can get a bit uh, old and circuitous, so it's good to add more people, and you know people, and I know people, and it's a, it's a good collabo. Absolutely. Cool. Well, um, our topic for today here on Amusement Sparks is yeah. uh, unprecedented, just like the last podcast that you were on, um, where we did a Survivor theme park, which was our first live action uh, inspiration for a, a theme park. I consider myself an unprecedented individual. I would I would say that's pretty true. You're you're groundbreaking in the uh, imaginary podcast design space. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great claim to fame, and it's going to look awesome on a resume. Let me tell you. That's true. <laughs> uh, so yeah, what what are we here to uh, design a theme park around today? So I thought it would be really cool to do a theme park based on the concept of a murder mystery or, uh, you know, mysteries more general because the, it's, it's a fairly uh, popular, you know, thing in culture. It has a long and storied history. A lot of our a lot of the most popular shows, you know, you look at like CSI or Law and Order has a lot of the same beats of the murder mystery. Um, but no particular property really stands out as like the ultimate, you know, maybe Sherlock Holmes, but that itself has seen enough iterations, but the common themes of murder mystery are just, uh, uh, so enjoyable to anyone who enjoys not just like a thrill ride or, or a psychological thing, but also just mental, um, mental engagement. Absolutely. That's totally true. And like, 
I, I'm just excited about this because it is such a wide open space. Just kind of like how your brother picks Shonen, and I was like, what? Like, that's everything. <laughs> and then you're like, how about murder mysteries or mysteries in general? I'm like, what? That's a, a whole thing. That's crazy. It's kind of like the uh, the Scooby Doo theme park we did way back, like the fir- fourth episode of this this yeah. show with Nick uh, Nick Rhodes, and that was a really interesting one. But it was more about kind of the the Scooby Doo tropes and like the things that happen every episode, whereas they're not the exact same beats as like a CSI or a general murder mystery, which can be uh, sort of similar in solving you know finding clues and discovering the mystery and all that kind of stuff, but much yeah, uh, and- more broad, I think. We're going to try not to cover the same ground in the same way, like, a lot of them take place in these sort of old Victorian mansions, and but, you know, we're not going to try and step on the heels of, you know, Green Hill Manor. Uh, oh, yeah. Either. Oh, shoot. I um, forgot. Yeah. You know, if, if – because I was considering, well, I also – Ben mentioned in the last one um, – but the board game Betrayal at the House on the Hill, which is a favorite, and that could be its own, you know, really fun thing, but uh, that's a little too similar, but I thought – I have a weird relationship with the concept of murder, if I may digress. <laughs> I sort of have to get a disclaimer out here. Okay. Oh, for, my. For your audience, uh, murder is bad. Okay. Don't, Whew, we're on the same don't page. murder. Um, yeah. Apologies if you have ever been murdered. Um, <laughs> just, I, ha- I just, as a word, I like the way that it sounds in the mouth. Yeah. And it instantly takes any conversation to a different level. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, th- we used to have a murder count for me at work. Uh, how many days can I go without mentioning the concept of it? Wow. <laughs> I, I don't think it ever exceeded three. I don't think I've... <laughs> <laughs> I know, did people, not know that about you. Wow. People listen to, a, you know, people love serial killer stuff because it's, it's this morbid fascination. They listen to murder podcasts and all that. It's just... It's a weird concept because I I love life. Um, I love being alive, all the great things that the world has to offer, all the experiences we can have, good, bad, etc. And murder is something where, like, that can just stop. Mm-hmm. Someone can take that from you and just – and there's no more you. And, like, that shouldn't be allowed. Right. And It, and it is, like, kind of mind-breaking in a way. <laughs> thankfully, it's not allowed. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. your brain sort of isn't meant to process the – concept of non-existence yeah um, it sort of starts rerouting because it, it it's not something that you should dwell on if you want to uh be well adjusted <laughs> but uh, you do at least once every three days yeah well <laughs> so <laughs> when i think of murder i think of it in the murder mystery sense which is it is a domestication of horror yeah absolutely. because in, uh, there's a great article in the uh, magazine Current Affairs that talks about this, how, you know, these the, these murder mystery stuff, it's, it's genteel. It's uh, controlled. In the real world, someone can kill you for no reason at any time. Yeah. And it's terrible. And there's a mourning process and, uh, you know, all that. In these uh, uh, works of fiction or serialized events – it's almost a game. It's um, it, there's control. There's reasons or people are doing these things. Nothing's vulgar, you know. People aren't getting brutally tortured. It's just, it's it's like a game. They're picking you off one by one, and you you have to solve something before they get everybody. It's it's a uh, it's a whole different thing from the real life uh, murder, right. and that's why I think it's still worth talking about. Totally. It's like, it's more like a a fairy tale than like an actual crime scene. You know, it's like someone, yeah, someone died, but there's a mystery afoot, gang. Like, let's try to figure out (laughs) like the, there's going to be a logical process to why this happened. There'll be clean cut evidence. Um, It's not going to be a big messy thing like an actual murder investigation might be in real life. Um, But yeah, it definitely draws on those same tropes and those same kind of like emotions of like someone has been murdered. But it's not just like let's let's cry about it. It's like here's uh, they left a clue. Here's some footprints. It's like oh cool okay right. so it's gonna be one of these. All right. It's um I, I I like that you mentioned fairy tales. I have a quote here. Ooh. Um, depending on who you ask, it's from G.K. Chesterton or Neil Gaiman. Uh, it says fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. And I think the murder mystery serves mm. a very similar purpose. Wow. Not that. 
not to tell us that this happens or could happen to any of us, but that justice can be served. Right. And, and like, uh, death doesn't ruin everything, maybe? <laughs> it's, like, kind of an optimistic perspective on yeah. that. Yeah, life goes on. <laughs> life goes on. Yeah, everyone else, after you're murdered, everyone else will be enjoying a fun mystery, but... You know, you'll mm-hmm. be dead, but everyone else, you know, they're still going to have a good time. It's it's going to still go to the... <laughs> a better time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting, like, uh, philosophical approach to it. It's like, well, you know, someone's got to die so that the rest of us can have fun and solve this mystery. So, eh. Yeah. Confusing. Uh, so that, that's, that's the framework <laughs> in which we're looking at, uh, awesome. in looking at this today. That reminds me of a lot of classic theme parks. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no uh but i do think it's got a lot of potential well no like if you go on like batman the ride and you see the joker you're not terrified because he's like an agent of chaos in sure. a corrupt world huh? it's just oh it's the joker cool right and it gets into kind of like the escape room kind of thing like there's this um gentle threat where the world's gonna end in one hour if you don't solve this mystery Mm-hmm. and that that does motivate you um but then again you realize that it's not an actual threat and you're you're rarely um too like elevated in your heart rate and in like your stress levels it might go up a little bit because of this fictional narrative right. timeline but you really just know that they're going to kick you out in an hour and then you want to have as much fun as you can within that time frame so yeah it, it kind you of know you know that there is an answer you know that the challenge can be overcome mm-hmm. in that time if you're smart Right. Yes. And I think using that kind of um, progression of like, we know there is a, a one concrete answer to this. It's not like in a case that's going to necessarily go unsolved. It's like, it's up to us to track down these points and then we will have completed it and we'll be successful. Mm-hmm. There's no possibility where you get to a point and there is no solution. It's like, well, you know, the, the real murderer is um, apathy. Like, it's not, it's not going to end up like that. There's going to be a, a real bad guy at the end every time. Andrew, we're the murderers. I think. Of I ourselves. Think yeah. Society, man. Um, so for this, for this theme park, I think because of the nature of it, we should establish a safe word. Um, <laughs> you and I <laughs> or for the whole theme park? Oh, well, you and I in general. <laughs> um, but for the theme park, because, like, if somebody is having, like, a medical emergency in the middle of this... Mm-hmm. You need to let people know that that's a legit medical emergency. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's fair. Um, um, how about this idea? Well, no, that's weird. Hmm. Yeah. We need to have some way of signifying that not everything is going okay anymore. Yeah. It, well, uh, and to, to solve that, we might want to talk about more about like the execution of this whole thing. Hmm. Is it going to be sort of like an escape room where, you know, you're in this, this house or you're in this room with a bunch of other people and then it turns out somebody just winds up dead and you have to start following the clues from there or is it going to be more open than that like an actual theme park where you can just kind of freely go wherever you want to there i think there will be escape rooms in it Uh uh-huh um but i think in general it should be more open you know a lot of a lot of uh the ideas on your podcast are great at doing that like first person agency do things right um but I also, you know, I want the option to just sort of hang around and get in the teacup ride or something like that and just kind of have a more relaxed, um, passive theme park experience. So I, I like to have both. Wow, that's an interesting idea. So having it so that it is a functional theme park with the classic attractions you've come to expect, but then there's also a layer of murder mystery on top of that. and like Right, because yeah. you don't, you know, murder mysteries don't happen in like... Uh, like in an escape room they're Mm -hmm. you know they happen on the street they happen in a mansion they happen you know uh uh, really anywhere um there's a lot of different properties that we can kind of draw from but Mm -hmm. i think in general we can break the theme park down into three different types of mystery stuff i think there should be short-term stuff so rides uh games you know the standard amusement park fair but if you go on them multiple times, you can start noticing clues and things like that and do like an extra thing after you get off the ride mm-hmm. where you can say like, you know, I saw these things. I think I have a, an answer to whatever, you know, uh, uh, whatever greater mystery is supposed to be in there, some sort of um, narrative. 
I think there should be medium length ones. So like, um, like an escape room or a mini puzzle challenge. And then I think there should be a long term thing where maybe, um, you have to go throughout the park and find a number of disparate clues to sort of figure out, you know, who's the mastermind behind all of these things. Oh, that sounds um, awesome. I really like so, that so, having like additional layers going on. You can just enjoy it at its surface or you can keep your eyes open and try to find as many clues as you can. And yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. People should be able to, to control their experience. I think what should we dig into first? Oh man, I don't know. So, um, you're picturing multiple murders have happened at any <laughs> given point in time in the in the theme park. Like, there's multiple stories going on over our, like, uh, interweaving and things like that. I was trying to think of a good way to have interplay work, and I don't know if there's an elegant solution for that, but m maybe one will occur to us as we go through the other things. Yeah. Um, one thing that I thought of is, like, if people are doing like self-contained games uh, like escape room stuff where one person's a traitor and they can't let people know that they're a traitor. Uh -huh. You can have other people just kind of watching, you know, from above and looking and trying to do their own game of like, can you figure out who it is? Oh, that's cool. Um, but in terms of direct interaction, you know, multiple detectives and murderers tripping over each other. I love the idea. I do not know how to implement that. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. I, so uh, here's a, a thought. We could do basically one murder per hour, something like that, <laughs> where where it's like um, or your of, money back, kind of a, a serial killer type of thing, where yeah, you know there's yeah. one victim uh, when the park like first opens. Here's your initial story beat. This person's died, and maybe there's a few clues throughout the park, um, and then the second hour goes by. There's another murder, and then there's new clues released into the wild. So now there's yeah. twice as many clues. But they could be confusing because this one might be about the first victim and this one might be about the second victim, but they all could eventually lead back to the same, either right. the there same killer or the same group of killers or something. There might be a common theme or, you know, something like that. Or you can, like, dot on a map where all they took place and they'll, like, form a pattern. Um, stuff like that. And then... Of course, the longer it goes on, the more clues you get. Mm -hmm. But if it's competitive for different people in the park, you can, you know, oh, I maybe I'll go out on a limb and accuse somebody before I have all the clues because I want to beat them. You know, you can do like the clue thing. Yeah. Uh, and if you're wrong, you're just you're not allowed to guess anymore. Interesting. That's cool. And we also could divide it up into smaller groups. Um, I feel like a traditional murder mystery doesn't have that many actors involved. You know, there's, I don't know, 10 people maximum, including one being the victim in mm -hmm. most uh, pop culture uh, versions of this. So we could do it in smaller groups where it's like um, everyone on this one attraction at a certain point in the day, you know, the, the attraction ends and someone just slumps over. And then you're like, wait a minute. what? <laughs> and then, the, you know, you have to, like, get out of the ride vehicle and they're like, OK, we're closing this attraction down. There's been a murder. Um, <laughs> so then everyone gets off the attraction like what the heck like you know we're one of 10 people in this car and one of us is the victim and one of us must be the murderer yeah like you sign up at the beginning of the day like please have a murder near me you know within the <laughs> next hour <laughs> and then and you don't know you're just like i'm just gonna go enjoy my time in the park i'm gonna get on that ride you don't know when it's coming oh that's really interesting yeah, that's cool. It, it couldn't be a traditional roller coaster, I think, because then it's like, well, it's no. obviously the person right next to them, or <laughs> it depends on the, the murder wound, I guess. If someone yeah. was in the front row and they threw, like, a knife backwards or something. But um, it's very interesting. Maybe a, more of, like, a, an attraction where there's areas of darkness um, or, like, a teacups kind of thing where, you know, there's a lot more chaos involved in who's moving where at what point in time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's very, that sounds really crazy and chaotic, but... It'd be, it'd be fun. If you wanted to do a more self-contained thing, um, you know, part of the fun is is like dressing up or, or taking on personas. Totally. So I was thinking for a lot of these, you know, escape room types, what you could do is everybody in your group, say, because it's more fun to do things with your friends, mm -hmm. you know, you, you get assigned a role and you're given uh, a list of tasks that you have to complete to like get out before, you know, you all die or whatever. Um, and one of you is a traitor. And so you're all trying to achieve different uh, different things while maintaining your facade mm -hmm. while also figuring out, you know, who done it. And so, um, you know, you would sign up in the same way, like 
you know, oh, I can sign up for a half hour of laser tag. I can sign up for half hour of like this Victorian mansion. Uh, yeah. I will be, you know, Alvin Percival Smith um, <laughs> trying to solve the mystery of the missing cat. I, right. I think that's awesome. I think that getting into a character adds a lot more immersion and gets people out of their comfort zone to a point where they're mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, my everyday version of me wouldn't be this outgoing or this whatever, wouldn't be in this character. But now that I'm in this character, I can really kind of turn it on a little bit and get a little more actory and get more involved in this. I think that sounds really cool. And maybe we could have different themed areas, like, you know, the, the Victorian mansion kind of thing. We could have, like, for some reason, I keep thinking of a cruise ship. We could have, like, a cruise ship oh, area on the interior. cruise ship is classic. I think it'd be pretty cool. Uh, a train uh -huh. is, a, is a really good one. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, very, man, various cool. cityscapes. Uh-huh. Yeah, like... There's so many different, you know, classic iconic set pieces um, from from various properties that you you can kind of mix it up, and uh, e even if the bare bones of a specific plot are the same, you can put it in different locations and not tell the the you know park goers where you're going to do any any given thing. That sounds cool. <laughs> so if you didn't want to have to sign up for one, you could do a limited version of this. So let's say. Oh, I'm near the food court or whatever, right? Um, you could just kind of come in and out of of a game where you're given a list of things that, like, the secret person, the secret agent, or the betrayer is gonna do. Like, oh, they're going to, you know, get a secret code from the hot dog vendor, or they're going to, you know, look through the trash briefly. But you don't know the order in which they're going to do it, and there's one actor in the general crowd, and you're just looking and trying to figure out, like, okay, who oh, is man. Who is the who is the plant? Yeah, that's super <laughs> Among cool. All these normal people, and it makes everyone feel suspicious of everyone else because exactly everyone I, has to be. Yeah, a part I also, of it. you're gonna get you're gonna get approached by some like Weasley kid who's like, "Aha, you did it!" And then like <laughs> you have to play dumb because you don't know what you did. Right? If indeed, you did something, <laughs> and like. And, like, the actor plants a knife on you, and you're oh, like, I, I've never seen this knife before in my life. <laughs> sure, that's what they all say. <laughs> I, I do love the idea of getting getting given a role where it's like, you're going to be the killer today. And, like, that totally changes your whole day. It changes your whole outlook. And I think it'd be really fun. And then you also might get a card that says, or may, no, never mind. You wouldn't get a card that says this. You might just become the victim at some point. Yeah. You know, the the murderer just walks up and is like, hey, uh, I'm the murderer. Here's my here's my badge. Uh, you're dead. <laughs> and then, you know, once you're dead, the, uh, like, I don't know, the, the ambulance will come and, like, take you away or whatever, the coroner, yeah, whoever. You can you can watch from the rafters or you can just go somewhere else in the park. Yeah, like. <laughs> I think that's fine. If you, if you are the victim in the Victorian mansion, then you can go anywhere else in the park. You can even sign up for the next uh, the next group to go through the Victorian mansion. I or love you the just idea. Here. I love the idea of somebody um, killing somebody in one part of it and then faking killing themselves and going to a completely different one. And so they're trying to solve, like, who did it? It's like, well, this other guy who died did it. <laughs> it's hard to describe. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of room for emergent gameplay. Absolutely. And I think a lot of this is very um, social. There's a lot of, like, social deduction, first of all, for the whole, like, you know, werewolf kind of gameplay, uh, mm. trying to solve who did it when one of the people is definitely the person who did it and you don't know who definitely it did it. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of social deduction, a lot of like acting outside your comfort zone. I think it'd get people out of their skin a lot. It'd be a lot of, I don't know, I think like it'd be really I'm going to give like, you, I'm going to give you a chance to retake that because you just said p get people out of their skin and that <laughs> well, is not the, the phrase and strangely topical. <laughs> some of these, uh, might be, you know, more for adults, uh, and they're, they're a little bit more violent, more heinous kinds of crimes. Uh, it could be interesting for people who are really into the kind of CSI kind of crowd. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. They don't all have to be too gruesome. Like you said, they, there can be, no. you know, just getting smacked in the head with a candlestick. Like that's, that's a fine <laughs> way to go out. <laughs> I like the idea uh, of like planting objects on people or like stealing. So you could have like you don't want to just go around stealing things for people. That's wrong. Again, actual stealing is wrong. Play stealing is fun. Um, if you could have like a little arena where you're given like five objects and you're not allowed to like put anything in your pockets or like your front, your regular pockets or hide them anywhere. You just like have them like taped on you and you're trying to like get the most, you know, items or whatever. So you can search around the environment like 
looking for them, or you can try and slight and hand sleight of hand them off of somebody else. Wow. And like see who gets the most, you know, depending on which way they, they want to play it. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's cool. And you could also um sort but, of... but one of them's bloody and you have to plant that on someone oh. instead because it's negative points. Whoa. That's a like cool... little little games like that are yeah. really easy to implement outside or inside each scenario. Yeah, and I think once when you said the word points, it was like, well now anything can be a game. You know, you can have a thing where you're you're trying to communicate with another detective without being seen right next to them. So it's like, well, you know, I'm going to, um, you know, you maybe send them a note or something that says, I'm going to leave, I'm going to send my next message. I'm going to plant it on someone wearing a, a top hat. And then oh. so the other detective is like, okay, that guy's got a top hat. I'm going to see if I can go like find a note stuck to him somewhere. I can peel off of him. Like know. there's two, there's two small groups doing their own little challenges and one person's allowed to go between. Yeah. And the, the, the clues for each other's mystery, some of them are within the other ones. And, oh, man, yeah. like, you, there's there's so many options for, like, ways to do this, which is good because it's hard to think of specifics on the fly. Right, right, totally. Like, like, writing mystery novels is an art that I do not have. Oh, my God, yeah. It's so complicated. And the, have you, you know, ever watched... And turns and all that. It's awesome. Have you ever watched, like, uh, Case Closed, the, the anime? Yeah, yeah. I love that show. But there's so, there's like over 800 episodes and they're all murders and they're all like super convoluted and like rely on physics and rely on like things that one person, one singular person has no business knowing all of that stuff. <laughs> right. I, or else it's that's amazing. the only thing in their life is like just they're just obsessed with complicated murder schemes. Mm -hmm. um which that's a healthy and, way and to get it out is making a tv show like not actually acting on those impulses <laughs> that's awesome i i do like it, the idea of including some of these different uh ips different like popular franchises you know like maybe taking some famous sherlock holmes case and using that as the basis of one of the areas yeah and maybe not do it beat for beat where it has the exact same solution but kind of referencing it and naming it in a similar way and having some cameos of, of famous characters from works of fiction would be really interesting. Let's let's talk about some of these um, IPs because I can imagine, like, you know, not everyone's going to be on their game the day that they happen to sign up to go to this place. Uh, so, like, have Sherlock Holmes, have Poirot, have uh, Columbo or Monk just wandering around and, like, you can ask them for help. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So... That would be someone who's an employee, and do they have like a badge on, or they just kind of they're kind of cosplaying as if, that character? Yeah, they're cosplaying, and maybe like, oh, that could be its own game. You know, which which cosplayer in the you know hunting cap is the real Sherlock Holmes? By which I mean the fake Sherlock Holmes, who is a real actor, the one who's getting paid to do this, not the one, <laughs> the who's, one paying who's paying us. Paid. <laughs> yeah, you have to find his pay stub. <laughs> and I mean, maybe they just kind of they they stand in like um, I don't know exactly. There's not like an office where all detectives hang out but there could be like a, a kiosk or something that's like <laughs> ask a detective um and then have that staffed by those people i mean that's a little dorky but at least you'd have um a park employee where you can clearly tell this is a park employee this is someone i can trust because everyone else is going to be like lying and uh stealing and trying to kill you so it's hard to yeah. to walk up and trust the average other park guest because you never know yeah. what their their motives are i think you should be able to like volunteer as one of these roles as well or like volunteer to like be the villain or be a plant or be, you know, the the officer of the law who needs to have other people explain things to them and like ask the tough questions like, but where's the evidence? Oh, yeah. Uh, like this, this park does a lot of role playing. It doesn't have to, but I think a lot of people who would go there would do it for that. Absolutely. And any, I'm not a huge fan of like role playing. Like I like playing pen and paper role playing games, but I'm not a huge fan of like, I mean, I don't know. But it, it's hard for me to like get into a role and act and all that kind of stuff to take it too for, seriously. For an extended period of time, it's a lot to ask of somebody. Yeah, but like during you know an escape room or during, or during a short term thing or even like watching a movie, I can totally get into this character for an hour, hour and a half. So I think mm -hmm. people would do that and like those kind of shorter, more contained experiences. And then maybe they're more themselves when they're just walking around the park, and then they suddenly get murdered all of a sudden. Like I think, <laughs> I think the Whoops. having the kind of the kind of safe zone in the middle where you don't have to role play if you don't want to is a nice, nice change of pace, but there's still that, that, the threat of someone's still going to get murdered every hour out here. Yeah. <laughs> Unless we catch the, the bad guy or bad guys. Yeah. So, um, looking at the different, like big names 
in murder mysteries. Yeah. Um, I think rather than take like their plot lines, and yeah, you can use the plot lines. I think they lend themselves to different styles of, um, you know, uh, puzzle solving and figuring things out. So yeah. like the way that you solve things in Clue is very different from the way it's done in, in you know, Sherlock Holmes. Right. Absolutely. So um, starting like Clue, a Clue type one would be like you go on a ride, you go on, a, you do a game. And every time you go or, you know, if you can spot the clues like, oh, I see the candle as I'm going through the ride, I see the candlestick. It must not have been used in the murder. Right. And you're like, you're doing like a process of elimination thing. Oh, man. If this was like a um, haunted mansion kind of attraction and actually goes mm -hmm. through the clue home, like that mansion. Yeah. That's a great idea. And you just have to like just, keep your eyes out everywhere. and oh. Yeah. Just just crossing off on your like reverse oh, yeah. scavenger hunt list because you're looking for the thing that's not there <laughs> right i i feel like that might be something we supply to the to every single park guest they get some kind of notebook because you're gonna find a clue in the beginning of the day that has nothing to do with any anything you're looking for yet but maybe later in the day you'll be like oh yeah i saw you know that red hat was in this trash can over at like this part of the park that yeah, might keeping, be a clue later on keeping track of things is going to be difficult i like the idea of like oh i have my list of clues and you have yours let's share information uh -huh. And then there's plants who lie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> just, awesome. It, and, I mean, someone might pickpocket your whole notebook and, like, give you a different one. That's, like... Oh, and maybe so that <laughs> maybe that helps you in a way. Like, the the one that they gave you is, like, an anonymous tip from, you know, someone who witnessed the murder or something like that. That's Because everyone has the identical notebook. It's, like, that's an easy thing to kind of swap out when someone's not paying attention. When they're eating their burger or whatever, you just, like, take mm -hmm. theirs and slip in a different one. Uh, one other thing I think maybe we should give to every park guest is a, a wristband. Um, this is my, my idea for things are seriously messed up right now, and this is not a game, um, <laughs> is have a, a wristband with a circuit, and when the circuit's broken, an alarm goes off. So, like, basically you just break your wristband. You can only do it, you know, once. Um, yeah. And then that makes, like, the alarm go off, or whoever's in charge of that game be like, wait, there's a, you know, medical issue here, or someone's actually yeah, been murdered, that's, or, that's you know, whatever. that's word, the safe bracelet. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, a, I think that's a, a more elegant solution. Yeah, I, I think that would work, and then that way people aren't doing it in every single game to, like, I don't know, mess things up. And that's, that's the one thing that you can't touch when you're writing stories and scenarios for this mm -hmm. park. You can't have someone who, like, breaks their wristband is like, Someone's actually been murdered. Oh no! Like, yeah, yeah, you can't don't go do there. That. But yeah, I think a uh, clue process of elimination is a really that. good one. Like for short games, and also like a little kid likes going on the same ride again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And it's not too cognitively difficult. It just requires like trying a bunch. Uh huh. That's true. And and going on the clue ride a bunch of times, even you know, if the, if your kid just enjoys the the ride itself. As the adult, you can be like, okay, I, you know, you'll get good at finding where the, uh, mm -hmm. the items are supposed to be and seeing, you know, who's missing and all that kind of stuff. Definitely. That's really cool. And the fact that there's so many active things means you probably won't get the same, like, long lines because, yeah. you know, it, there should be a, a quick iteration process for that sort of thing. Totally. Um, another style of uh, solving is, like, the Columbo style. Yeah. So, like... I love watching Columbo anytime it comes on because you you start the show and you the audience member see the murder take place. You you learn the character. It takes like ten minutes. You learn who did it. You learn how they did it. All that's left is for Columbo to go through and like very early on he's like, I think you did it. I'm gonna go find some evidence. <laughs> and she's right. oh he's so charming. Um, yeah. So the way that this style uh, would be done is you go into the scenario, you know who did it, you're told like ahead of time, hey, this person did it, and the game is finding that evidence. Wow, okay, cool. So is that like um, the word has been handed down to you from someone you trust that this happened, or did you actually witness it? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how to do it in terms of like keeping it consistent with the theme, but like knowing who it is ahead of time and finding evidence i think is a different sense of the game than say like a sherlock style one where you know you're putting on disguises and going getting information in the wider world or a poirot style where you're like you figure out who did it and now you need to like 
like browbeat the witnesses enough so that they confess like <laughs> like an, and it's I, all about your it's all about your oratory so like the different mm -hmm. styles i think lend themselves to different ways of of solving oh yeah um it's just it's not necessarily going to be a one-to-one -one, like hey i'm living this story right uh, but i like that idea of having you know different approaches for different types of people if someone's very analytical or they're really into forensics mm -hmm. they're going to be wanting a different kind of adventure than someone who just kind of wants to run and like jump over stuff and like be like an action yeah. hero kind of solving them. Do you like do you like finding physical evidence? Do you like interrogating witnesses? Do you like uh putting on a disguise? Do you like you know figuring out who's telling the truth and who's lying? Mm -hmm. Um so and you know that that's kind of what makes these stories so enduring is they're not all the same. They require different skills. Oh, yeah. Um which is why different detectives do different things. Mm -hmm. What what do you think about um, interrogation? Is that a, a a thing we'd like to replicate in this amusement park, or is that a little? Oh boy, that's yeah. <laughs> that's a little tricky because like it's one thing when they do it in a show and it's like admit it, admit it, Ms. Uh, you know Miller, you you poisoned him for the insurance money, and she like breaks down and cries. But like if you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. kind of, you don't want to like hurt somebody's feelings yeah. because they're you know they're not going to admit it right so you there's a could a few ways you could do it you could do kind of informal ones just with other part guests because mm -hmm. each person kind of has a different role but you also could just have paid employees who are um key people in each crime you know like it's the the wife of the victim and you go interrogate that person and they are very you know they're really accustomed to that role and they know that they actually did it and so like they'll have little tells and they'll yeah um maybe there's holes in their story that like have been well rehearsed so that they're reliably there I think so you could do cool. like the you could do like the ace attorney kind of thing uh -huh. where like you're you're interviewing them and like you and other people are competing you all get the same witness you have five minutes to interrogate and poke holes in their plan and then whoever's the best at presenting that case <laughs> yeah that sort of thing yeah uh, again a completely different skill Right. I like that a lot. And actually, that's yeah. kind of how um, there's a, a new game called Detective Pikachu. Um, <laughs> it's basically Ace Attorney, but you play as a, a boy with his Pikachu. It's like a talking Pikachu. It's it's awesome. But that uh, yeah. remains absurd. That's, that's such a weird idea. That, like it's super 20 weird. years ago. You're like, hey, guess what? <laughs> guess what? The, guess what the Pokemon people did? <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's it definitely they're swinging for the fences and it's it's kind of cool because it's like you're in the pokemon world and you're just going around solving crimes it's like you have all this evidence and you have to like select the correct piece of evidence that actually you know um proves that this person is guilty or or proves that they're innocent or whatever mm -hmm. um, but it's the same kind of skill of like collecting evidence in your notebook and then figuring out what order you need to present those things in to create a logical argument but yeah that, there's stuff there and, for the kids i guess is what i'm trying to say is that this sure. doesn't have to be just a thing where the kids are just there for the rides like the kids can kind of start to figure out basic you know argument structure and like presenting relevant evidence it's kind of a, an interesting skill even if you're not going to be a detective um just for pretty much any you know living yeah i mean critical thinking it can be in short supply i, I could definitely imagine a, a, a field trip to bring kids in and uh you know get them to get them to do that um, I, when I taught at a high school, uh, they had me teach a year of, uh, forensic science Wow! and it was hard because like not every, you know, forensic technique is equal and some of them are more robust than others. And you tend to need more than one kind of evidence. And, uh, just, just showing people how to like build a case based on, what on its own might be innocuous is uh it, it's a really tough skill and having that environment to scaffold that sort of understanding i think would be a really cool thing because it's it's something people are all kind of into already given how popular these shows are but mm -hmm. how, where do you begin you kind of need to know everything before you can do anything you know sherlock yeah. holmes master of all kinds of tobacco is like okay <laughs> why would he know those <laughs> right uh, i do like the idea of kind of having um within the themed areas maybe having certain kind of like themed cases like basically when you're trying to figure out what you're going to do you're planning your day out there might be uh one case 
that has a lot of like sports trivia in it. It's like um, you know, uh, help solve uh, the mystery of like, you know, this sports memorabilia collector. And so if you like really love <laughs> sports trivia and you'll be able to like figure out what's wrong with this collection and why uh, you can tell that this rookie card is faked instead of the real one or, you know, whatever, you can find that kind of evidence. So basically having it themed to people's particular interests, you know, oh. if, if you're an accountant by day and then there's like a forensic accounting situation where it's like, we know someone was murdered and there was a large sum of money missing and we're trying to figure out like, where that came from that's a super nerdy example but <laughs> some people might be interested in that i'm interested in that um so yeah <laughs> you're you making me think that. like the the pamphlets for the park itself can be like forgeries and like little codes and things in the wow. in the in the documentation like you send it out and like there's a secret message there for a secret part of the park <laughs> totally it's yeah, ridiculous I mean, there's going to be secrets within secrets and i think the people who work here as designers and as employees are probably going to be uh, pretty good at coming up with new ideas for how they can take this one step further. And I think, it, I think it, it seems like a really cool storytelling environment for the guests and for the employees to, to act parts out and then also kind of create new parts as well. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I, there's a lot going on here. And I also think it might be good for, for field trips for like creative writing classes, any kind oh, of, yeah. any kind of writing really, where you need to take someone from point A to point B to point C is, you know, you're building a case, you're presenting things in the correct order. I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of really useful skills that you could develop here. And that's the trick with, you know, like I said, writing so many different stories that are all basically like, hey, they, you know, wanted their money or they wanted revenge or they, you know, fit a jealousy or whatever, killed somebody. But in terms of solving it, you can take like any factoid you know and build a case around that. And if the detective happens to know it or learned it earlier in, you know, the episode, quote unquote, that's when it comes back up. So like definitely a creative writing uh, uh, sort of experiment would be to like, here are some, these are random facts, you know, let's make a story around it. And this part can kind of show you how to do it because you can get, you can do off the wall kind of, kind of stuff. That's I mean, really CSI cool. does it week after week. Oh, yeah. How, how, how hard could it be? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I also like the idea of, oh, there are so many clues throughout this whole park that are totally unrelated. You know, the, the Victorian mansion stuff has nothing to do with the cruise ship case, but mm -hmm. you might still have that evidence in your notepad. And, like, if you wanted to, you could try to building a case off of, to prove that these two things are connected. Um, and then I don't know who the judge is here, which is another kind of thing to get to, is, like, you know, there's it's pretty straightforward figuring out how to discover evidence. And then like, mm -hmm. once you kind of build your case, do you just kind of accuse someone and then spout out your facts and then the whole uh, gang mentality, everyone just turns on them? Or is it like, there's a judge somewhere. We take this to court. I don't know exactly. Maybe you have to yeah, go get a police a... officer and then like prove to them that this person's guilty. It's a stylistic choice. So depending yeah. on what's, what, kind of detective you want to be that's going to inform it you know you're going to bring everybody together and just sort of like Citizens tease them along like i think i know who it is but i just need to check one more thing and then somebody else dies in the meantime because you're bad at your job <laughs> i guess like this would be a good way to teach people cool like um not how to murder but um <laughs> that's you good. know things teach them like sleight of hand like have a little mm -hmm. workshop on like how to how to do sleight of hand or how to hide your emotions or how to BS somebody. Yeah. Um, those they, things that are actually kind of useful in day-to-day -day life. Like yeah, and, and the good guys all have these kind of same skills that the bad guys have a lot of the time. You know, they can mm -hmm. pick locks, they can manipulate people. It's it's kind of weird how these skills are just, they're just tools and tools can be used for good or for evil. So Yeah, you yeah. have to know your enemy to be able to figure out how to beat them. Yeah, that's really interesting. Huh. That's smart. I, I think that'd be really fun. Like you could walk away from this park with a ton of new skills and in a more confidence, you know, mm -hmm. man. That's awesome. And and all of those skills should pop up somewhere in the, uh, in some of the cases like, Oh, today we learned about a bunch of like how to tie different kinds of knots and what they are each useful for. And then you like, you see that kind of knot and you're like, Oh, that knot's really good. When you come at it from this angle, I wonder what that tells me about who did it. Are they yeah. very tall? For example, Oh, that's really cool. And you could even like start out the story that way. You know, if you signed up for it, also, I think the cases should all have really cool, like kind of cheesy uh, detective case names. 
Um, <laughs> so if you sign up for the one that's about knots or whatever, um, I'm sure there's a good pun in there somewhere. But anyway, you sign up for that one, and maybe the the scene starts out innocently where you're you're taking you know you're down like by the ocean or something. You're like learning how to tie knots or for whatever reason, and then someone's murdered, and then later at the end of that case the not knowledge that they were innocently teaching you about at the beginning comes back into mm-hmm. play. So that way oh, everyone yeah. has had a chance to have at least learned that if they were paying attention at the beginning. Right, right. Oh, that's great. What, yeah. I, what I like about a lot of these is there's plenty of opportunity for red herrings. There's plenty of ways to like adjust difficulty on the fly. You know, maybe you don't lie to them as much if they're, you know, younger kids. Mm-hmm. Um, different resolution of, of secrets. So like... There's a surface level solution and then, you know, in a larger plot sort of way, um, you know, there's there's like extra clues that you can sort of uh, tie together over over the course of a day. Um, just just there's a there's a ton of different options here. Yeah, oh, that, that's, so that's cool. part of why it's hard to get, nail down specifics. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and it was it was kind of similar with the, the Shonen episode. It's like we took it from this huge, overwhelming thing, mm-hmm. distilled it into this amazing thing. But then we can't really go from there and make specifics. Um, or at least that's not our job currently. We're just in the yeah. you know, phase one development, uh, what, uh, pie in the sky what, kind what, of stuff. Which type of uh, mystery solving would you would you want to Ooh. do? Would you want to do like the oh I have all the evidence I just have to present it or I have to I know who did it I have to find the evidence. That's I a think great for question. me Go doing ahead, yeah. the like doing the like Sherlock Holmes thing and like oh I need more information on like the local you know den of thieves. I need to put on a disguise. I need to you know. Uh, uh, figure out the password. I need to get my way in, and then I can like ask around, like gathering information from people, not necessarily just from like forensic evidence. Right. I do think that that is more interesting, like interacting with people and trying to read people and all that sounds really cool. But I also like the idea of um, kind of <laughs> like you know this thing is going to happen at some point. Keep an eye out and figure out who does that. I just love that. That would be so stimulating to have to pay attention to this whole crowd of people. <laughs> and like watch for someone to hand something off to someone else. Like I feel like that'd be exhilarating to be on the lookout for something and then see it happen and like, oh my gosh, now it's like, I don't know, it, it would be pulse pounding, I think. Yeah, I mean, you think about like a, a stakeout where you're sitting in a car all evening looking for somebody. But if you know, like, listen, this part of it takes five minutes. So <laughs> you have you just, you can maintain a high level of alertness for five minutes. Right, right. Yeah, I don't uh, think you... you want any of those um, to go on for too long. You need to give them no. a pretty tight time frame, or else it's just absolutely exhausting. There's a uh, video game. I think it's called like Spy Party or something. Yes. For yeah. two players, and one of you is uh, like a spy, and you have to like go talk to different people at a party and like get a different information and like uh, you know achieve things on your checklist. And everybody else in that party is like a computer player. And then the other player is a sniper the next building over watching the uh, party and trying to figure out who the spy is. So you're just trying to like analyze behavior at a distance, trying to tell the human apart from the computers and the humans trying to pretend to be a computer. It is it's awesome. like the mind games of that. And I feel like that could be pretty easily implemented here. Absolutely. And, like, there are very specific things that they have to do, like, you know, switch this statue with this statue. Mm-hmm. And then, but the computers will also randomly pick up statues and kind of do <laughs> similar behaviors. I, I do, I love, that game is so fun to watch as a third party as well. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I love that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> giving one person very specific checklist and then putting them in a room of people doing similar things. And then maybe at the end of 10 minutes, you have to pick one of them out of the lineup and say, this is the, this is the person who did it. I love that. To, to incentivize people doing that and to get more people playing as like, you know, these uh, roles in each other's things, uh, in, in each other's uh, uh, crime solving activities, um, you know, because most people aren't me. They're not going to look at a checklist and like, great, I'm going to knock off every part of this checklist in order. It's going to be fantastic. Um, what you can do is, you know, if you're trying to solve this wider mystery, you know, you meet an informant and he's like, if you do all these things on the checklist, I'll tell you, you know, the next bit of yours, or I'll give you a clue or I'll give you a secret, uh, so that you can get the, the really good players to like be each other's, uh, 
uh, targets. That's really cool. Oh, I, I'm so excited about this. Like, there's so <laughs> many like layers of motivation and excitement built into here. I yeah. feel like it's going to be so much more memorable and like um, exciting than just going to a regular theme park. Yeah, just... and the like, you know, the the rides and games and stuff. That's you know difficult. This is another one of those parks where if you have the brain power and the time, you can kind of do this anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it, because you're not playing, you're, you're not riding the park, you're, you're playing the other people. Right. True. It's, it's almost all a social thing. It's like this is a place for this one kind of social behavior where yeah. we've structured it so these things happen at a regular interval. Mm -hmm. but yeah this is totally a thing you could take into your next you know house party or you know into the classroom or whatever next time we're teaching it's like you could do a day where it's like uh there's a mystery and you guys have to solve it and like i'm gonna play as a character or whatever <laughs> you could you could kind of get yeah. into it if you want to i've thought about doing that like doing almost an escape room kind of thing like we need to figure out how this thing works or else we won't be able to leave the class when the bell rings. We'll be stuck in here until we figure it out. Um, I haven't actually <laughs> executed that idea yet, but I think it'd be really fun to come up with like different clues and hide them around the, the room and then have clues that lead to the clues. And I don't know. There's so much fun to be had yeah. in that space. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't do enough murder mysteries. Um, <laughs> there's, a, uh, there's a fun improv game that I did once where um, you know everybody puts on a character and then one person dies partway through and the rest of the game is an interrogation and everyone says like i'm innocent but if i did do it here's how and then you you all vote on like who did it wow so there's no pre-existing like, uh no wow it's, it, it's like the movie clue any one of them could have done it. there's evidence <laughs> right. in all directions <laughs> right oh that's awesome and that, i mean that's that is a style of of this kind of thing that we could have you know one of the areas it's like purely improvised none of no there's no script here we don't know who did it as yeah. the the park people so it's, <laughs> i mean that's really fun as well there's so much play possible here but then you can also take it totally seriously and be absolutely meticulous so i just i don't know i love that it can be accommodating for so many different people but it also flexes new groups of muscles uh mental muscles um for everyone as well definitely that's awesome i also think we should include some kind of secret areas that are only accessible by specific people you know people who have have achieved certain things like they were the one who found the actual murderer then they get this mysterious invitation to go to this you know exclusive club that's only for people who have successfully solved a case or um, committed it or, or gotten away with one ah, like a den, of, a den of thieves kind of thing yeah. like oh you know one step closer to meeting the big boss that's great and then maybe and it, once you go there they give you more tasks of you know go pickpocket this person or uh mm -hmm. we need to to ruin uh we need to mess up this um detective so they don't solve this case like we need to get someone to be a fall guy and take the blame for this murder or whatever there's all kinds of cool criminal activity you could get involved with there could be a whole criminal ladder. So let's say like you you walk into the park at the beginning and there's like a wall of like framed portraits and it's like these are our benefactors which have made this possible. And one of them is like actually head of the criminal syndicate. And each person, you know, you can you can rise within the ranks of the criminal syndicate by getting away with murders, oh, or man. you can f get closer to figuring out their identity by solving them. So you can do whichever one works better for you. That's awesome. I really like that being able to kind of um, make progress down like the the good guy path or the bad guy path and kind of switching back and forth. You could double agent. Mm -hmm. You could get to the top of the criminal syndicate and then like turn them into the authorities. Yeah, Sherlock Holmes did that all the time. He would pretend to be a bad guy for a yeah. while just to just to get access. Why not? And, and it's more fun to be a bad guy. I mean, it, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Audience, again, it's not actually more fun to be a bad guy. At the theme park, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we, we, have, we have a lot of caveats in this one. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're playing in this space that's based on actual crimes. So we're not talking about the actual crimes. We're talking about the play based on Play the actual crimes. Yeah, it, it's just important to specify <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> right. A uh, uh, little refresher. I really yeah. like this this one. I You know, Me too. Uh, when I was in like elementary school, we would have these uh, like grid puzzles where it would be like, uh, you know, on your left side, you've got people and on your top side, you've got like animals. Yes. And it's like, well, Logic Frank puzzles. has an animal that's taller than, a, you know, and you have to just sort of process of elimination it. I would love to do that. Um, 
and just and just go through solving things in the real life. Yeah, it might be um, easier for the average person to comprehend because, like those logic puzzles, you know, you can buy those whenever they sell Sudoku and crosswords. They have logic mm-hmm. puzzles like that, but some people just can't get their mind wrapped around it. But being in the room with all of those people and all of those animals, it might like, I mean, it, it would probably spoil it. But also, well, also just. You can also just get them into the mindset, you know, oh, hey, kids, we're going to the to the amusement park. Uh, but they send out this promotional material and like I'm in the car ride, they can like try and solve these just to get them in the mindset oh, yeah. or to like, help them start off with a with an extra clue. Absolutely. That's great. I love the idea of kind of spinning this off into materials you can do at home and bring back for your next your next visit. And it's mm-hmm. kind of cool that it, it wouldn't have to be something of financial value. Like a lot of theme parks, it's like, do this social media thing and you get half off your tickets. This would be like, do this cool thing and you get this clue that might help you. I don't know. Um, right. <laughs> it's, it's like you put the the work on the the guest. Like the guest is there to to do work in a way. You know, it's, it's solving mysteries. It's fun. But they're not, uh, yeah, they're motivated by additional little incentives within their fictional job, either for the good guys or for the bad guys. The best parks, wow. like the best uh, field trips, are, you know, they work better if you have something before going to, like, get oh, yeah. you in the mindset and have something afterward to, like, take away with you. Yes. Um, and those logic puzzles or, like, uh, you know, like, oh, you've amassed all your clues. Hey, you have to go now, but, like, you didn't finish solving it. Like, solve it on the way home. Why not? Yeah, that's super cool. You could also do some kind of uh, social media types of things. Like maybe you have, you know, the park employees, like the that anonymous, that benefactor who was the bad guy, right? Maybe yeah. he has this like fake social media account. Like that character <laughs> has, has an Instagram. And so if you use hashtag whatever the name of the theme park is, this guy might message you and like send you this weird cryptic message. And then at some point, you know, you're at the theme park and you are trying to crack the case with this guy in it. And you're like, wait, this guy messaged me on Instagram like a year ago. Like, I wonder if this is any use to us. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. I love that. And I think a lot of escape rooms kind of do this sort of thing where they like encode messages in their social media or their advertising has like some little clue in it. But this could go so far above and beyond that. And like you yeah. have the most cryptic, bizarre clue and it will still help someone at some point, which is kind of cool. <laughs> You can do a lot with cryptograms, you know, if you if you f- buy into the mindset of like eh, criminals want to be caught, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> On some level, it, well, this is this is this is great. I love this. It is great. This this is so so fun. I really want to go here, or at least bring this into like you know my daily life in a way. Um, <laughs> not every day, of course, but I mean, I like, it's fun to solve things. <laughs> oh, totally, absolutely. And and mysteries add so much. I think they're so compelling. Um, I think that's a way to like get people off their phones and get uh, rid of their distractions. Like, wait, what? There's a, what? It requires focus. Yeah. I love that. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a really cool like call to action and then series of, um, additional calls to action and like things to be aware of and things to take notice of and then, um, be cautious about cause you could, there could be a murderer right around the corner who's actually yeah. looking for you. Like you just get handed a slip, like you've been graphically murdered. Um, <laughs> sorry, you you know lose your lose the progress on your uh, clue sheet that you've been working on. Yeah, Let, and let's talk about that. What's the technology of of the uh, the special effects or the gore or whatever? Would you give someone a timer that says you know in ten minutes you'll die of poison, and then the timer goes off and they're like, oh, I'm dead, and then they like lay down. Oh, like, uh, like, like when you're investigating a room, like an escape room and, uh, you know, some of them are like quote unquote trapped. <laughs> right. How? Um, or, or is there like the angel of death comes by and like yeah. smears fake <laughs> sure. blood on you and then like, it just walks away. <laughs> um, I like, I like the idea of, um, you know, something small plus, you know, people can do it as they want. There's a, there's an improv game called Jeepers Peepers where, um, Everybody looks down and then looks up at this uh, if, uh, all at once, and you can look left, right, or center. And if you lock eyes with somebody, you both have to do like as big a Hollywood style death as you can manage. <laughs> um, so you could do it kind of like that, like you know, here's your here's your slip of paper in X seconds, you know, die in this manner. And if it is like if it's poison, you know, here's some water and, uh, you know, a fizzy thing so that you can get the foam out the mouth. Or if there's, uh, 
you know, oh, you've been you've been stabbed or shot or something, you can have like a little fake blood, but like you should apply it yourself because not everybody will want that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and maybe there's gotta be a, uh, as you're stepping into the room where this all is going to go down and there, each person kind of goes through a separate room or maybe they go through an intermediate room once at a, one at a time with an employee who's like, you know, you're good. Come on through and, or, Hey, um, we're going to put this, you know, you're going to be murdered, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, give you some details and, like, maybe hook you up with the correct kind of technology. Um, but then it needs to be premeditated, I guess. Well, well or or if if just somebody refuses to play along, it, you know, have the bouncer at the door, like, I'm sorry, you can't go to the next part of the room. You've been murdered. Right. Uh, <laughs> like, you can watch from the balcony, you know, as, you know, an angel or whatever, but, but you're dead. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I do like the idea of, like, some of the things that you're looking for could be trapped because then you have to start becoming more okay with the idea of like working on imperfect information mm -hmm. uh, and then false accusals. And then whoever's being accused, if they're not the actual murderer have to defend themselves. Uh, just a lot of great emergent uh, 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 play and opportunities. Yeah. It, I mean, it could definitely increase your stress level and your like paranoia where it's like, you know, everyone could be out to get you. Everyone could murder you. Uh, it's kind of crazy. There's a lot of possibilities. But doing it in kind of one hour chunks at each one of these different themed areas would make it so there's like a, a relief when you leave that area. It's like, I survived, <laughs> I can release this tension, and then, you know, next time you go queue up for the next attraction, you're like, okay, let's yeah. let's figure this out. Yeah, uh, that catharsis yeah. is a is a huge part of this. Yeah. You know, nobody nobody wants to be stuck in, you know, the mystery forever. They like having it solved. Yeah. Totally. And if you cool. get killed, you don't want to just, you know, keep getting killed at every attraction you have you just have to watch. So no tired fun. of being murdered. It's very <laughs> upsetting. It is very upsetting. Oh man, this place seems like so interesting and it and so unique. Like, yeah, there's no other place like this. I mean, escape rooms come close, but this is a bit grander and more open. And I I like having that freedom to kind of make it your own experience because, you know, escape rooms do take a lot of uh, a lot of effort to mm -hmm. put together. Oh yeah. So, like having having stuff to sort of be changed each time can keep it can keep it fresh yeah and the interconnected nature of them as well like sometimes i'll i'll do an escape room and then there was this one thing that i always thought was going to come into play and it never did and that just kind of sticks in my craw for a while i'm like wait what was that thing for because oh wasn't like you found an extra key that yeah, didn't go to anything you right. just gotta you know well, i'm just gonna hold on to this for a while yeah and like sometimes you can interpret you know, the same clue many different ways. Like, was that Morse oh, yeah. code? Was that Braille? You know, whatever. Um, being able to have those things interconnected, like, there's always a few extra clues in each one of these areas. It's mm -hmm. like, well, maybe I'll use that clue again later, you know? That's great. Uh, That's great. Yeah. It's complicated, but I think it would be really fun. And, and like, you're, you'd are you really sleep well that night because you, you <laughs> do so much thinking during this day. Um, it'd be awesome, though. I think, I think a lot of people would really... Um, succeed and like thrive in this kind of environment and then maybe realize like maybe i should do this for a career you know either be uh, start writing mystery novels or like get a, a career in like law enforcement or forensics or it's kind of yeah cool. join join the james patterson uh, author mill yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're always enlisting i'm sure <laughs> um you could also have some of these themed as like kidnappings as well for like oh, field yeah. trips or whatever you know you could keep everything else exactly the same <laughs> and if there's a kid you know under 10 in the in the group it's like ah this person's been kidnapped oh no uh um, you, you you're a teacher you bring your class to this place you get kidnapped oh, hilarious that's awesome. <laughs> those kids are gonna remember that <laughs> yeah i mean that's basically what my idea for like doing the kind of escape room type of thing would be uh -huh. it would be like the teacher is not going to be of any help to you. You're going to have to come to these conclusions on your own. So honestly, I would sign up for that if I was the teacher. I'm like, okay, yeah. let me, I should be the one who gets killed here or gets kidnapped or whatever. Oh, that's great. It, it might be cool to include more, and this is me being like a nerdy, you know, educator at, at heart, um, doing things where you can kind of teach people about building a case and the basics of detective work might mm -hmm. be helpful because someone maybe has never seen CSI before and they're just like, this person was just murdered and everyone else is just like walking around looking for stuff. Like, what is this? Um, mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with the genre, it might be overwhelming. So maybe there's a uh, murder mystery 101 <laughs> kind of, kind of, you know, little thing you can go do or like a little movie you can watch. Um, just yeah. Like, you yeah. see like a, like a mock courtroom, you know, diorama and it's just like, here are the facts of the case. Here's the evidence. And then like, here's 
somebody presenting the evidence poorly. Here's somebody doing it well. Here's somebody doing it well and making a very like emotionally appealing case of it. Yeah. Uh, like with good rhetoric. Uh, I, I could definitely see that as like an introductory thing or like just something to look at while you're in line to like get you in the mindset. Totally. And, and you need to teach people kind of like what the expectations are here for you should be play acting. You should be getting mm -hmm. into this. Feel free to, you know, keep keep your own uh, <laughs> evidence here. Come to your own conclusions. Accuse people. And be aware that you might be accused. You might be murdered. It's nothing personal. <laughs> it's it's all play. Um, yeah. Just kind of setting that expectation so no one gets defensive when someone's like, hey, um, you know, you're, you're dead. I, I stabbed you in the throat. Um, they're not going to just haul off and punch that person. They're going to be like, oh, okay, right. I get it. It's part of the game. Okay, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everyone should be chewing the scenery. Acting oh, <laughs> totally. Over the top. Twirling your mustaches and uh, chewing the scenery. Ooh, yeah, Love fake it. mustache is definitely a uh, <laughs> is definitely yeah. something in the gift shop, like oh, pack totally. of twelve. I, I think the idea of of dressing up in the different like themed attractions would be really fun, and, and like you said, coming up, you know, either making up your own alias or be, being given a persona would be really uh, compelling and help people get into it. Um, totally. I'm so pumped. Thank you for being on the show. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure. Yeah, for the listener, if you want to you hear more of this, this uh, creativity as he de delves through the past of cartoons <laughs> with his brother, you guys are great. You come up with, you, you know, you are going through existing media, but there's a lot of creativity involved in your process. You do no, little you. skits. You do um, kind of your ideas of maybe like how this could have been done better or I don't mm -hmm. know. There's a lot of of art that goes into dissecting something you know it's yeah not just definitely science. yeah it's it's something that you develop over time tearing away the surface level stuff of, you know because you can go on youtube and see like person reacts to this and it's just like a cool thing and then you can see somebody like oh my god just like screaming <laughs> at the camera and it's like yes that's entertaining in its own way but i kind of want to understand why something works right um we also do a fair bit of talking over each other on that one. Apologies. I got very excited at parts of this. No, that's awesome. And it um, does actually relate to uh, kind of building a compelling case. Like you guys break down mm -hmm. specific parts of each thing, you know, the animation, the music, all that kind of stuff. Um, and kind of come up with like why this is good or why this is bad. You're sort of building an argument the whole episode. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like in an argument, sometimes adding extra detail doesn't help. Sometimes taking something away could be more additive just because you're not bogging down whoever's paying attention with details that aren't necessary or that they could have figured out themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we have fun with it. If people want to listen, that's great. Um, I also want people to listen to Empowered because that's just a bunch of fun. Um, superpowers, uh, if you have only five minutes, you don't really have the opportunity to, you know, go back and repeat yourself or get confused or go <laughs> off, you know, you can go off on tangents, certainly. Oh, we, yeah. We do plenty of that, but I uh, uh, definitely recommend people checking those out. Yeah, there's a lot of laughs in that show. It's it's really funny. Um, for being a thing where people just talk about superpowers, it's, like, surprisingly funny, especially the fact that it's only five minutes. Like, it's surprising that there are multiple laughs per episode in a five-minute <laughs> time period. Like, oh, yeah. It's pretty sweet. Um, Definitely. You get, you get some pretty uh, pretty fun guests on that show. And the, yeah, the, you, should, you should check out Andrew uh, on that. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're very also, funny as well. In well, those. well, thank you. I just love the, the fact that there's different people on it, different episodes and different combinations of people. I don't know. It, it's cool. It's like a mixer of like different you know podcast personalities or mm -hmm. just interesting people uh, being on We're the show. We're always looking for more uh, contributors as well. Totally. You know? And actually, uh, same I, thing here for amusement parks. Um, if anyone's interested in being in, on pretty much any of our shows, let us know. 